How did I pass this? Hi everyone, today I thought that I would sit my 11 plus grammar school entrance exam and for those of you that don't know, in the UK grammar schools are schools that are supposed to be free and you take an entrance exam to get in, meant to be for academically achieving kids no matter what their background. I'll explain this more in a future video but it often turns out that grammar schools are not an equal playing field for poorer students to get in because you can pay for tutoring and things and I have a lot of thoughts about that and I will go into depth about that at some other time but for now we're just going to sit the exam. For a grammar school entrance exam you have to sit four papers, one is in maths, one is in English and then you have two called verbal reasoning and non-verbal reasoning and they're quite hard to explain but it's sort of just testing your logical thinking skills I suppose and your intuitive skills. They're meant to be quite hard to actually revise for, it's meant to be something that's a bit more innate ability I suppose. I think they're all multiple choice and I'm going to try and sit them and see if I would get into a grammar school <laughs> again. <laughs> okay so the first paper I'm going to do is going to be the maths paper. Okay, depending on how long it is, I'll see how much of it I'll do. I might not do all of it. So the first question is, which of the following is the most likely weight of a bag of flour? This is a maths question. Um, it's two kilograms, isn't it? Look at the grid on the right. Molly starts at the star. She moves two squares southwest, two squares north and one square east. What shape does she arrive at? So two squares south, what, southwest, one... Two, two squares north, one, two, one square east, she's at the pentagon. Look at the bus timetable on the right, Jemima lives on Hart Street, she wants to arrive at Maple Lane before 10.15, what time should she catch the bus from Hart Street? She needs to get the, nine past, the 10 past 9 bus. How many thirds are there in 9? Okay, I know that one. That one's 3A. I think. Look at the shape on the right, which angle is ob ob obtuse? Oh my god, I actually can't remember this. It's B, isn't it? Because it's a wide one. Okay, it's B. It's B. A class of year six children. Okay, so this is just interpreting a Venn diagram, should be fine. Tigers and giraffes, but not lions. Next one, which of these numbers is the smallest? 0.7. <laughs> It might seem that I'm taking a bit long being a maths student and doing this, but I just, I think it would be more embarrassing if I got one wrong. The length of each side is 4 cent, the perimeter. How many sides are on that? 4, 8, 12, 16, 24, 32, 36, 40, 44 centimetres. I, the thing is, I just can't tell if I've counted it right because I haven't got like paper to cross off the sides as I go around, that's my excuse. <laughs> 47,983 people went to football match. What is this number rounded to the nearest thousand? Round it to the nearest thousand and that's 48,000, which is deep. A class of children were asked what their favourite sandwich filling is. 25% of children liked ham, so that means 50% Right. Tuna? I feel like I'm going to overthink it so I'm just going to go for 50%. What fraction of this shape is shaded? <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> it's making my eyes go funny. One, two, a half. E. Oh no, hold on, I missed a question. <laughs> I'd have failed already. There are 25 CDs in a box. A shop orders 14 boxes. How many CDs? So you've got to do 25 times 14. That's, that seems to me like quite big maths for um, like 10 year olds. 25 times 14. <laughs> What's 25? 25 times 10. That's 350, I think. Oh my god. This is so embarrassing. I'm a maths student as well. <laughs> I'm going to get kicked out of Nottingham. <laughs> Which of the following statements is correct? 52 is greater than 520. It's that one. It's not any of the others. <laughs> yeah, it's that one. A factory makes 4,596 nails in a week. How many nails are left over? Minus two, nine, one, four. When you're at uni, you never do mental maths. You might, another excuse coming from me now. When you're at uni, you never do mental maths. C. 
six one eight. I was going to go up to 25 questions but it's taken quite long just to do these maths ones so we'll just do 15 each in for him diversity he's trying to work out the volume of a swimming pool what unit should he measure it in meters cubed okay so that was the math section done I think I'll just move on to the next sections and then add it up at the end Okay, now let's move on to the English paper. Now, English was my best subject previously, and I took it up to A level, so things crossed will be okay, the English one as well, but we'll see. I failed the grammar test on LinkedIn <laughs> yesterday, so that wasn't great for me, but we'll see how we do. Okay, read this passage carefully and answer the questions that follow. Okay, so it seems this is like a reading comprehension one, so I read the test, the test. I read the text and then I say what I thought about the text. Why was Mi Nuong lonely? Because she was confined to the tower. Does she do any of these? Oh, embroidering. I never saw that. That took me ages. So she sews. <laughs> I just completely missed that word. What is her father like? So this is like implicitly like gaining things from the text so you do like a lot of this in English language A level actually and in your GCSE as well you're looking at text and thinking well we can tell that her father is protective because he keeps her locked up in the tower is he cruel maybe not because he could be being cruel to be kind so I'm going to say he's protective which of these things isn't mentioned in the, in the story oh god water fire sunlight moonlight or gold sunlight how does the music make her feel so again this is sort of implicitly working out things from the text and again this is something that's quite hard to teach i think it only really comes with experience that you're able to do these sort of things it makes her feel enthralled and wishful why was the man on the boat <clears throat> that's a good question he was on a fishing boat so so he was there to fish. Why does Minuang lean as far out of the window as she can? Because I don't know whether it's because she wants to hear more of the song or because she wants to see the singer. Said she glimpsed. Yeah, she wanted to try and catch sight of the singer. Okay, yeah, I didn't read the text properly. Clearly. <laughs> Which of these words best describe how she feels at the end of the passage? Optimistic. Okay, next bit. Um, which of these words is closest in meaning to the word forlorn? Um, mis miserable? It's like those things that you think you know and then you actually ask a question about it and you're like, hmm. <laughs> what is meant by the phrase she felt as if she was floating on air? She, she felt joyful. 11. What is meant by the phrase the man she was destined to marry? She is meant to marry him, I think. It's actually quite hard. Like, what technique is being used? Like a flickering candle flame draws the unwary moth. What technique is being used here? A simile? Because that's what uses like or has. I think it's a simile. Gosh, I don't know. What type of word is unwary? Oh my gosh, this is hard. It's not a pronoun. It's not a verb. I can't believe I'm struggling so much on the English bit. English is meant to be my best subject as well. Um, an adverb, I think. She glimpsed a tiny figure of a man stood on the prow. Which of these words is a verb? Glimpsed. And then the next bit is a whole other section, so I'm just going to leave up to 14 questions on the English one. Okay, and now we'll move on to the verbal reasoning paper now. I remember enjoying these papers the most when I was studying for the 11 plus, so hopefully it'll be fun. <laughs> the number of codes for each of these four words are listed in a random order. Work out the code to answer the question. So I think each number associates to a letter for three of these. I'm going to have to write this down. Hold on. If we look at the middle words, we have fours and threes, and I think that these fours and threes are going to mean either an E or an A. And if we see the number one, the, the number one is the start of one of these words, but it's also the last letter of another of the words. 
that it's a code for. So if we can find a letter that starts one word and ends another and has no place in anything else, then we might be onto something, if, that, if any of that makes sense. So if we assume that 1435 is dram, because I tried it with 1435 equaling need and that didn't work, so I'm going to try 1435 equaling dram. And then because 1 is and 5 are swapped round in another set of numbers, then that could be neat. And 2 is E. So that means 6342 is where? It works. Yes. Was I meant to do that? Oh yeah, yeah, I think I was meant to do that. So now that I've cracked the code for it, it should be fairly easy to go through these questions now. So number 1 is find the code for the word DRAM. And that is 1435. So put 1 is 1435. Find a code for the word REAM. Okay, so it's going to be 4, 2, A, 5, no, 4, 2, 3, 5. Find the word that has a number code 6, 2, 3, 4, where? Just a small disclaimer, I, I'm doing this like completely blind, I haven't looked at any papers before, so I was completely taken aback by that first question. <laughs> So we have another one of these sort of code questions and we need to find a code for the word might so we need to crack this code again and after that it should be straightforward. So we have a 4 in the 2nd position, a 4 in the 4th position and a, a few moments later. I think I did it. Oh, that went a lot faster than the first one. Oh never mind, I didn't do it. Finding this quite difficult. Finally cracked it. Oh, look at all that working. <laughs> That was so hard, that's like the most mental effort I've expounded in weeks. The words in the second set follow the same pattern as the words in the first set. Find the missing word to complete the second set. Vile vet fact. Sail so blow. What does that mean? Oh, you've got to like work out what the pattern is as well. The only sort of pattern I can see is that the middle word has the first letter of the first word word and then the third letter of the first word and then the last letter the last word the first letter of the last word wand that's a word m-u-r-e mule me me don't know i did i did or did i did that's not a word though oh it's meant to be idea i was the two middle letters swap those round and then the first letter of the last word lip eventually Letter. Find a three letter word that completes a word in capital letters and finishes the sentence in a reprehen reprehensible way. <laughs> Find a three letter word that completes a word in capital letters and finishes the sentence in a sense in a sensible way. I'll put some ged cheese on the pizza. In in brackets you write rat. Ged rat? I don't even get the example. <laughs> I'll put some ged rat, rat ged, cheese on the pizza. Is, is ged rat some sort of cheese I don't know about? Oh! Uh. It's not necessarily at the start or the end, you could put it in the middle. So I'll put some ged cheese on the pizza. If you put rat in the middle, you get grated. So I'll put some grated cheese on the pizza. I was so confused. I was like, ged rat? The whole time. Okay. 14. My cousin wears arms in the swimming pool, and that's armbands. So then bam is the three letter word that goes in the middle. I always choose hock and the fish and chip shop. Ha haddock at? And I'm just going to leave it there. <laughs> Gosh, that was really hard. And there's even more than that. I, if this uh, video takes off well, I'll have, I'll have to do a part two. I'll do the rest of this. Okay, we're finally doing the last bit, the non-verbal reasoning paper, and this was the bit I remember I always found really tricky, apart from the maths bit, which I also found tricky. Question one. Find the figure like the first two. Looking at what these two triangles have in common, which is that they're both triangles, I'm going to go for B. And then it's got this one with loads of spots on it, at least two dots on them. Oh, I don't know if I'm meant to know this, but the dashes are ever so slightly different. I'm going to go for B because it's got two dots, it's got lines that intersect, but it's got the line types that are used in the second. So what do these have in common? Well, there's a black one and there's a white one. I'm going to go for C. I can't explain it. 
<laughs> so it's got to be an arrow pointing upwards, so it's either B, C or E. It surely can't be B because those are those are hexagons, so it's got to be either C. Oh but E's got a hexagon on it as well. A I'm gonna go for A. Then question ten. We're nearly there. Two hours later. Section two complete the series. I think I remembered hating these ones, so I always find these different. Each of these questions of five squares on the left are arranged in order. One of the squares is missing. One of the squares on the right should go in its place. Find which of the squares on the right should go in place of the empty square. E for that one. I'm going to go for E because it looks like it's going round the circle face. I'm just going to do this one up to 14 questions as well so we're not spending ages. Um, this next one, question three, is either C or D. I'm sure of it, I just don't know which one. I think C. And lastly, we'll do just do question 14. And um, that one's A, I think, because it's like a cube going round. So the maths bit was alright, the English bit was alright as well, but I found the verbal, non verbal reasoning ones really, really difficult. So now I'm going to mark it, and my mark won't mean anything because it's not like a set pass mark, it just depends on you just selected from the best of everyone who took the test each year. So like the best hundred or so and stuff. I took two entrance exams and one was for the grammar school near me in Wolverhampton and the other one was for the grammar school in Warsaw. Nowadays you just take one and then you just go to the school that's nearest but back then I was 13 spots away from getting into the Wolverhampton grammar school one I think and I got into the one in Warsaw and yeah, so a failed one and a passed one. Failed, maybe isn't the right word. I just didn't get into one <laughs> and a passed one. And I remember I really wanted to go to Wolverhampton Girls at the time. But now I'm glad I went to the other one. Because if I didn't go there, I might not like maths and I wouldn't have met my boyfriend. So, so yeah, it worked out well. <laughs> hey, let's have a look at the answers for the maths one. So question one is E, yep, got that correct. C, yep, 10 plus 9, yep. Okay, I've got question four wrong. One is made up of three thirds, oh. <laughs> I can't believe I got that question wrong. I was so sure, I was like, yeah, nine is made up of three thir thirds. <laughs> okay, I got that one wrong. I was not expecting to get any other maths paper wrong, so that's a very embarrassing. <laughs> 36 centimetres. Oh, I didn't count the sides right. I thought it had 12 sides. That's another one that I got wrong. Wow, would I even get into a grammar school? Probably not. Got that right, that was D. 14 is 1682, got that right, and 15 is D. So I got 13 out of 15 on the maths paper. Depressingly, not full marks. <laughs> I do a maths degree. It's fine. <laughs> That's all I have going for my maths talent right now. Okay. English paper. B. Yes. Oh, I got question 13 wrong. I said it was an adverb. And then 14B. So I've got all of them right except for 13. I'm, to be honest, i am never ever learned about what nouns, adverbs, adjectives were at school. I mean, there's no excuse now because I'm 20. <laughs> But I feel like we should have learned them at school and there was like a lot of problems with my primary school. It's in special measures now, I think. Um, but yeah, we just never learned what like an adjective was at school. That's, that's kind of weird, isn't it? There's no excuses, I just don't know stuff. <laughs> so I got 13 out of 14 on the English paper. And now we're going to move on to the two that I'm dreading, the results for. The verbal reasoning answers. Question one, one, four, three, five. Oh. Mm. Oh, it was Muse. I don't know why I didn't get that. I like Muse as a band as well. <laughs> I don't know what the word is, but I was looking at like Moosey. Moosey? That's not a word. So I was like, it can't be that. It must be Muse. <laughs> so I got that one wrong. Okay, cool. We got. 14 out of 15 on the verbal reasoning. Not bad. 
lastly we have the non-verbal reasoning and yeah I had no clue about this one <sighs> okay B I've got question one by I've got question two wrong <laughs> it was C uh, I've got question three wrong as well oh my god and I've got question four wrong as well and question five and question six and question seven will I ever get another one right this is so embarrassing I did so badly um question nine got question nine wrong question ten got question eleven right got that one got question twelve wrong question thirty that is so embarrassing I got one two three four I got five out of fourteen on the non-verbal reasoning one <laughs> will I even get into a grammar school no <laughs> in total end up being 15 30 60 end up being out of 58 out of 58 I got okay I got 45 out of 58 in total what what's that as a percentage 77.5 percent hmm, not bad <laughs> could have been better <laughs> anyway so yeah so that's it I hope you enjoyed that adventure I need to work on my non-verbal reasoning clearly I'm awful at it <laughs> but yeah let me know if you want to see me do a part two where I do the rest of these papers <laughs> and yeah let me know do did you go to grammar school do you have any memories of having to do stuff like this uh, and how did you do if you were doing it alongside me how did you feel about the questions? Did you think they were hard? Easy? Let me know. See you soon.